Hello and welcome to the Nitty Kitties channel. I'm Annie Art Nettie and it's a pleasure to have you here. Now, I thought I'd make this video. I've already done a video on this U10 sewing machine because I was keen at such a good affordable price. Will it work as good as a other computerized sewing machine? It's got so many stitches in its library and I tried it in a video which surprisingly has got 4.7k views. So what I'm going to do today is show you a year on. I'm going to sew some more patches to my denim jacket. I'm going to make a apron for my cooking channel which I'll tell you more about later and repair some clothes. So a year later, how does it work? Does it still work as good? I think so. That's, in a, in a nutshell, amazing. I absolutely love this sewing machine. I'm not sponsored or affiliated by U10 or any brand you can see in this. It's my honest opinion. I love this sewing machine. I was hoping, I'll do this a year later and see, you know, what, is it still as good as it was and stuff like that. And it, honestly, I love it. The thing with the sewing machine I'm working on one is at first it's going to be baffling it's like anything it's like learning to drive a car it's like what are all these dials and buttons and everything like that as you learn and you get more confidence it's it'll just be like second nature so again just like a car you've only got one pedal and you can't go wrong in the middle of that it's got a speed setting you can either set it to what I call beginner or first gear and when you press your foot on the pedal which I, I haven't, oh, I haven't got any foot to do this so I'll talk about that in a bit but when you put your foot on it on this first setting, the very slowest one you put your foot down, no matter how much you put your foot down it's not gonna change speed or suddenly go into 50 mile an hour it's it's just brilliant for a starter so highly recommend and the fact you can just drop the bobbin in as well it's so easy the direction for the top bobbin it's got it all written for you I'll put a link right now top right corner to a card to the first original video so you can see that now <laughs> about that I watched back a few of my old videos now if you watch my more current videos you'll notice there's a bit I think I've grown a bit of confidence which is great speaking I'm learning more on making the videos look more visual and appealing and things like that I'm still sorting out angles I think the lighting has improved and I watch the old stuff and I listen to my voice and how not as confident I was and I get a bit embarrassed and now YouTube's took away this thing where you can't see the thumb, thumb down and to be honest I, I don't think that's helpful that they've done that because the thumbs down is helpful in that well I can see I need to improve but there'll always be something to improve on so that's the thing of learning and please bear with me I am still learning and I, I'm still not as confident as I need to be with speaking but I'm getting there anyway so I am enjoying being on this journey of making videos and improving and stuff like that and the thing with this with this sewing machine and any sewing machine you've got is the more you do it like not necessarily every day but a little go and that the more you'll improve and you'll gain it and you, it won't be too overwhelming and that I, I think it's just breaking it down into little chunk little chunks bite-sized pizza pizzas <laughs> bite-sized pieces and you'll learn a lot better then and it'll go in and you'll be like ah it'll be like second nature you, you might be watching this and you've right I've given up on this sewing machine I don't know how to do it the hardest bit let me tell you is winding the bobbin and that's it <laughs> once you've got the hang of that you're fine the next bit is 
tackling the stitching and making it neat now you can let the sewing machine just run straight I'd say see the way I've got my hands maybe one at the back and one at the front but whatever you do don't put your hands near that needle please don't do that but practice get some crap bits of fabric or something and practice on them and you start off slow and go faster and you'll get it honestly you will I believe in you if I can do it anyone can do it so go for it I'm still learning I'm not an expert at sewing machines or embroidery or anything like that just thought I'd show you the back of that patch there but that's good that's not, I know you can iron them on but there's something more I don't know the word I like it better <laughs> it's more rustic so I thought I'd show you how easy it is to do the bobbin to pop the bobbin in you just drop it in all you need to do see the direction that that thread is going it's going anti-clockwise that's the only thing you need to bear in mind so I'm gonna get that bobbin there and you can see the thread is going anti-clockwise and then you just drop it in like that as it says on that the only other thing you need to remember with this particular one I'll show you in a minute but we'll drop it in first now before I pop it in there see there's a little notch on the left that needs to go in first notch in and then it'll it'll pop in place no bother so there we go that little notch on the left first there make sure that goes in first in the left and then just pop it down and it's as easy as that I just like to make this in a way that it's not overwhelming and you think I can't do this there's no such word. well there is a word just can't but you'll you'll do it and you'll get there you'll be fine so the next thing I'm gonna do is repair my partner's hoodie because there's a where the hood joins the rest of the hoodie it's got a rip in it so I'm just gonna I mean it didn't look perfect I'll tell you now I'll show you when the time comes but at least now it's hidden and you can actually wear it without this big rip in the side of it so let's just watch that And another thing is as well, when you're watching me, you're watching the left-hander. So <laughs> it might look a bit awkward. I think it'd be the other way around, I'm not sure. but Or maybe I'm just making it look awkward being left-handed. <laughs> now the way I learnt is exactly what I'm doing here. The way I learnt was watching YouTube videos. And I found the people who broke it down into little bite-sized pieces piece. I said it again didn't I bite-sized pieces not pizza though pizza is nice bite-sized pieces were the ones that I learnt off and they slowed the footage down so I try to do that as much as I can in the hope that it helps Usually there'll be two bits of thread left at the end and what I tend to do is tie that up to make it secure at the end and that's what I'm doing now so I hope that explains that snip off the ends there and here we go so that's the inside the bit that you won't see and there 
not as as good as new but good enough <laughs> so i've got my beloved carl fogarty t-shirt here this is an official one i got off a family friend and i can't bear to part with it so i thought i'd foggy <laughs> the boy from lancashire there he is so i thought i'd try and repair it because i absolutely love it and i can't get rid of it at all so there's his bike there that's that's the dream bike right there <laughs> the foggy bike so yeah i haven't actually watched the super bike racing for a long long time but i'm planning to draw so many portraits one of them being foggy is Ducati 996 he had the foggy patronus as well didn't he but no mind about that but <laughs> i like the moto gp as well valentino rossi and things like that so i'm not big into sport but i really love the moto gp and the super bikes that's my favorite so this yeah that this t-shirt i just couldn't bear to part with it and thought well maybe i should repair it because it's just sitting in a drawer doing nothing and i should i should wear it really So when you're doing this on a sewing machine and you've got the material on the bed there at the bottom when it's going through it's doing its own thing you'll notice it goes back and forth that's because it's creating those stitches it's computerized and it knows what to do but as you move through the menu you'll notice the position of the needle will change so there's no need at all to pull on the fabric or anything like that but you can keep it steady the only thing you need to do is make sure it's going straight that's all you need to do you don't need to move it or pull it or anything like that because if you do that will actually stretch the stitch and then it won't be as secure so i hope that helps as well but i was actually thinking of making another video if there's anything at all I've missed out and there's tons I'm trying to keep it as basic as possible for people who are a beginner and they're getting the confidence in in being on a machine but I wondered if there was any questions about it or about any because basically once you've got the hang of one sewing machine I'll go back to cars again you could probably go in any car and kind of pick it up again and go right that's where that is that's where that is it's going to be the same kind of things but maybe some bits are in different places so if that makes sense but somebody could be watching this and they've got a brother sewing machine and then ah so yeah yeah i've got a bobbin dropping bobbin but it's not there it's somewhere else on the machine so yeah i'm trying to keep it as simple as possible but i did wonder to me 7.4k views is a lot so this is why i'm doing this again because it seems to be quite popular and i wonder if anyone's got any questions or anything and i'd be more than happy to help and make another video uh with any queries in case there's anything that i've left out of these two videos but yeah that's one of my top tips is anyway don't pull the fabric at all so there we go that's that's improved that and we've repaired that sleeve my beloved t-shirt is saved <laughs> So just do the other sleeve now. And I was trying to figure out the logistics of it as well. Because <laughs> I didn't want to end up like a Picasso. So yeah, I've learned again, I've learned through YouTube, I've learned more of a visual learner. 
because I don't know about anybody else but when you first open the sewing machine from scratch or you get given one or whatever and it comes with this leaflet actually a point there if it doesn't come with a leaflet nowadays they should all be available online so I hope that helps but if anyone's got any queries like that do comment below and I'll try to help you but I don't think I can help with the ones that aren't electric ones I'm not sure about that the manual ones but it, you open it and there's this manual it says got these little diagrams and some people are just brainiacs at this where they'll work from that but I find when I watch it I'm like ah that's how you do it there might be something that I do that I've done really really fast and somebody watching this who's never done it before or watching I wish you'd slow that down so if you're that person please do comment and let me know that because I can gladly do that and we'll have a part three and I'll help So a bit further on in this video I am going to make a apron because I've also been working on a cooking channel. I kind of wanted to mix baking and cooking with art and doing some colouring sheets and I don't have an apron so I thought why not make one at the same time while I'm trying to help people why not make one? and the fabric I wanted to use out of a big bag of fabrics I've got is Snoopy <laughs> so I've, I also knit Snoopy cuddly toys so that'll be coming up in a bit as well you can see them but I yeah I wanted to make a pinny for my cooking channel now I'll put the link in the description for that as well because it might interest you with some artwork in it so so far I've got I repaired I repaired the hoodie I repaired the t-shirt now I'm gonna make my apron <laughs> and I thought I'd give you a few more hints and things that I do so I like to add a hem onto different things that I'm making because otherwise you get that fraying of the fabric don't you so the first bit that's gonna happen is right along the bottom hem there I'm gonna make that nice now all I do is I just fold over the fabric twice I know that that's not the technical way to do it and there's better ways to do it and I'm gonna find that out and go on a journey and do better at that but this is how I am gonna do it this time and then whoops <laughs> so what I do is I'd use pins but one of my top tips is if you are using pins on a sewing machine don't let that needle go anywhere near the pin because nine times out of ten nine and a half times out of ten you'd be very very lucky if it doesn't it will break the needle so if it doesn't you're very very lucky and it'll probably be that one time that it doesn't so yeah so don't do that but the best bit with that when you're making your hems is to pin it put pins across but don't for whatever reason don't let that needle hit the pin because it will unfortunately break it so again keep your fingers away from the needle you don't want a night in A&E &E. it'd be awful so if you're following a pattern where you've cut out the patterns I'd say leave a good one and a half centimeters extra fabric around the edges that'll help immensely and I'll give you more tips in a minute but this next bit I thought I'd show you there's a little box of goodies inside there and we're gonna have a ganders at what is in there now when I'm making a hem I tend to use the sewing machine to do some little stitches to secure it rather than put pins in because I'm clumsy I'm gonna be that person to break the needle there is a little tool in this where you can unpick 
the stitches with it and they'll come out nice and clean so I'll show you that in a minute but I thought I'd let you have a look at what goodies come with this when I bought it just in case they don't do it anymore and if you want I'll do another video and explain what all of these do but one of the things that it does is you can have two needles going at the same time on it So if there's any of them which confuse you, do comment below as well. So every sewing machine apparently comes with one of these where someone has tested it and made sure it does those specific stitches. So you know if that's in there that it's been tested. But I don't know if maybe they stopped doing that or whatever. So that's a good little peek inside what's inside there. So this is just a bit to demonstrate so you can see. The red bit won't harm or tear the fabric at all, so you don't want that. So those little bits that I've made there, you can easily unpick that with that tool. If you can get that red bit under, that's brilliant because it won't damage your fabric at all. So I'm going to carry on with some bit more of the hem there on this apron and a few more tips I think and one is you've got a pattern that you want to follow and you want to cut out all of the pieces but you don't want to damage your book which you, the best thing to do is to get just a cheap pack of tracing paper or any really good see-through paper really and cut out the pieces of tracing paper to the shapes and then you can pin them to the fabric there and then you can cut out the, the fabric then the shapes in the fabric which is really good now what I do <laughs> what I do is I use a machine called a brother scan and cut to cut the pieces out I find it's more accurate and it doesn't fray the fabric too much as well which is brilliant and it there's a bit setting on it where you can leave a gap a 1.5 centimeter gap around the edge of your shapes so I'll leave a link there so you can see that I am going to do a video at some point where I'm going to make a Harry Potter blanket using the scan and cut and the U10 sewing machine so it's going to be like a brand marriage between the two so look out for that one as well that'll be coming in the near future another of my tips is when you're first starting out and you're a bit unsure of I'd, I'd get probably a my first sewing machine booklet or something like that is always really really good for a beginner there'll be patterns usually in them what I do is I go to the library and then it's non-committal then <laughs> with these books because you might get it out and you think right this is too advanced for me or I don't understand this book rather than going out and buying a load of books you can go to the library and use them and then you can use your tracing paper to trace the shapes out that you want to cut and then I think that that's the good bargain way of doing it I think obviously you don't own those books but you could probably get them out again for a few weeks but yeah that's a good way to get patterns and get a few different things I think things like peg bags and drawstring bags aprons toys things like that it'll give you the confidence you need but I think the first thing to do when you're learning is to get the most a bit of fabric that you really don't want and just practice running through that and getting the confidence to get a whole row of stitches and you'll be stitching in no time so there's the hem done so far I chose there's a stitch on it which looks like little dogs 
of course being Snoopy so yeah that was a lot of fun the hardest bit was doing the curved edge around the armholes so what I did I got a pair of very sharp scissors here it actually came with a Cricut which I had to send back I prefer the brother scan and cut but that's just my opinion there you might prefer the Cricut I made some snips along there and that meant that I could make a curved edge and not, it just seemed to work somehow so much better than some <laughs> I don't know why but it seemed to work better for straight edges you don't need to do it but for a curved edge I find just like doing that snipping maybe every inch and the bit that I snipped was only about a centimetre and it made doing that curved edge so much easier so what are you going to need when you first start stitching? I'd say a pair of really good sharp scissors, a pack of pins, doesn't need to be expensive, a tape measure, a set square would be really good, you know a, a, a set of set squares, I so that's so you can do squares and rectangle shapes and they need to be perfect 90 degrees don't they so otherwise it's going to be squiff <laughs> and hmm, a pack of tra a, a cheap pack of tracing paper even the kids want to do so not really that exp the expensive bit is going to be the sewing machine and then getting your fat quarters which is brilliant for making a blanket with now one of my other hobbies aside from sewing is knitting and I make a lot of clothes for the dollies <laughs> I'll make a lot of clothes for the dollies on my sewing machine and this is the you can see how obsessed I am with <laughs> peanuts and there's good old Charlie Brown I love Snoopy so yeah that's that's the gang anyway and I've got a little shop where I'd sell me knitting on Etsy and on Amazon handmade so I'll pop that in the description if anyone wants to have a look or if you want any advice on anything like that as well feel free and I'll try and help so the last bit I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew a pocket on the front of me apron I think every apron needs a little pocket on the front so that that's just these deadies that's probably the easiest bit to do really and it's the last bit as well so if I was to hand stitch this and I do do em embroidery as well and cross stitch if I was to do this by hand it would take a week <laughs> whereas I did this and it was done in an hour and a half maybe less so much easier <laughs> So I hope that was helpful and informative and another thing I'd add to your shopping list is to get just a cheap pack of threads, the bobbins as well, just you, you don't need to be expensive at first, I mean that's more down the line if you're going to be doing it professionally or selling them or things like that but when you're first learning, not cheapy cheap but get a, you don't need to bung in and get the most expensive ones but that that set I've got there I was actually given them and I'm very grateful for so really good really good but yeah when you're first learning you don't need to spend an absolute fortune just get uh, all your needles and everything like that as you've seen with this set there was extra needles and everything like that so and for the price I think that was absolutely fantastic so again a year later highly recommend brilliant if you watch me old video please if you watched the old video please don't judge too much because it was a year ago I didn't have as much I still need a lot more confidence I feel but yeah the lighting's a lot better and things like I've been working on different bits so anyway <laughs> keep that in mind so but any constructive criticism is always gratefully received as well but there we are so a thumbs down for YouTube for getting rid of that 
thumbs down because it's not necessarily a bad thing it can point you in the right direction of what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong so the last actually the last bit of it is putting a bit of ribbon on so I can tie it round my waist round my, my apron round my waist and I put some ribbon so I could tie it round my neck as well but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a bit of material so that I can pop it on over my head so that'll be done a bit at a later date so yeah and then what I did was I made sure that the ribbon didn't fray at the end as well and folded that over and made a stitch so that it didn't start fraying and that But the most important thing to keep in mind is take your time, don't get frustrated, it's easy to do but there's loads of tutorials online where I'll actually find the best one I learnt off might help some other people, I'll pop it in the description below, it was really helpful and it was so straightforward. I was trying to wind the bobbin and it was taking me hours, I watched this video and I did it in a minute or under a minute and I was like what was I getting so stressed about that's the bit that I think is the hardest bit honestly but just have fun and enjoy it you know but don't get frustrated because it just makes it a chore then rather than something fun and a hobby to do so and also oh, another tip as well is to go to in the UK they're called charity shops but in America I think it's called a thrift store now I refer to charity shop it's um, like second-hand things and I found fabric in there cotton reels knitting wool as well and ribbon and things like that so do have a look in charity shops slash thrift stores or whatever they're called in your country because that's where I found a lot of fabric and as well in actual craft shops some of them have the reduced to clear bits with big bags of fabric so here's the finished result with my apron i hope you enjoyed that and hope there's some helpful things in there and if there's anything i missed out please do comment below i shall see you again soon and bye for now